Very good morning students. This lecture is a recapitulation of the chapter Trailing the Jaguar by William Price. So the short story is a true example of Price's adventure story where he describes the exciting hunt for an exotic and dangerous animal that is the jaguar. It captures the interest of the reader from the very beginning after which the adventures unfold itself in a series of incidents. The story is also laced with excitement and humor and it also highlights the characteristics of Roderick or Rot, also known as Rot, as a hunter. So Rot is not a conventional hunter but he is unconventional. Why I used the word unconventional here is because Roderick, he did not use any conventional methods of hunting, that is the use of guns, but instead he only used uh, lassos or ropes for his hunting expedition. This is an introduction about William Price. So William Price, born in 1887, died in 1983, was a Canadian-born American writer. So he's best known for his work, I mean, adventure series for young readers. And the aim of his work was actually to incite a feeling of excitement and interest to young readers where he mentioned different types of locations, wild animals, and also adventures in the story. So these kind of uh, stories were to inspire an interest in young readers to learn about wild animals, their habitats, and also about their behavior. Students with the hunters finding the footprints of the animal. And the author is here, describes the footprint of the jaguar that they were as large as dinner plates and they were almost perfectly round. So the footprints reminded Rod of the tracks that he found in Mexico of another jaguar. And Rod instantly compared the tracks that he had found in Mexico with the one in Amazon and he um, came to a conclusion that the ones that he found in Amazon were bigger than the ones that he had found, I mean the footprints that he had found in Mexico. The author then we find that um, he talks about the Mexican tiger, the African lion and the Bengal tiger and he compares it with the jaguar of the Amazon. So the Mexican tiger is like a house cat means it was smaller in size and this one that is the jaguar that he found in the Amazon was the world's biggest and um, it can take back uh, and he, I mean, he uh, uses the expression uh, and thus he packs a wallop to describe the strength of the jaguar. So the, the jaguar of the Amazon is a bit smaller than the African lion or the Bengal tiger but either ways he can um, bring them down, bring either of them down and he can fight with them because he was that strong. Then we also come across the purpose of Rod, why he wants to catch the jaguar. It was because that um, he was uh, trying his best to catch the jaguar for his collection. And his collection of exotic animals would be incomplete without the king of the Amazon bees. But so far, the animal um, that is the jaguar was too clever, so many times it avoided the hunters so it, it managed to avoid the hunters now after they found the trail of the animal rod sent one of the indians back to camp and he asked them and he instructed him to bring lassos that is a rope made out of basava to be used as weapons uh, 
in this expedition and they left out all guns and other ammunitions that were supposed to be used in conventional method of hunting. Following the footprints of the animal, the hunters now entered the dense forest of the Amazon and in the forest, the author noticed that there were no bushes or shrubs except tall trees. And these trees were several hundred feet above the forest. So the enormous column of trees reminded the author of the tall pillars of a cathedral and hence he compared the forest to a cathedral. So the author here, he used a figure of speech called the simile where he compared uh, two different kind of images or things to bring a clear and um, a vivid image to the reader. So and also um, the author also describes the tall branches of trees uh, and how they form a roof like structure through which spotlight of sunlight sunlight shone like stars. Okay. So while walking through um, the thick dense forest, the author heard the occasional crackle or the sound of a twig under his feet, which again reminded him of the sound made by an organ, which is a musical instrument used in the church. So the tracks led the hunters to the fringes of the savannas along the riverbanks and it is here that the animals of the Amazon they spend their time during the day. The hunter then, uh, the hunters then followed the trail for about three miles, and at the edge of the forest they were concealed by a screen of underbush. So an underbush is where small trees and bushes they grow underneath tall trees in the forest. And from there, you could see that now the jaguar is in a quarry, which is a type of an open pit where uh, the huge jaguar was laying. The jaguar is beautifully clad in rich golden coat, covered with irregular black rings. So this is a description of the jaguar. And its head seemed to be much larger than its body, which is a typical characteristic of the jaguar. So this was the first sight of the hunters um, when they saw the jaguar. The jaguar was laying on top of a log and he was looking uh, down into the water fishing. And it had no idea that it was being watched by the hunters. Since it was busy fishing like any other good fisherman, it was preoccupied uh, with the activity and also it was lucky um, for the hunters because as the jaguar was laying on top of uh, the log, the wind came in from uh, the shore or you can say the breeze, a sea breeze was coming from near the shore. So, Hence, the, the jaguar could not get the smell of uh, hunters and he was aware of, I mean, I mean he was unaware of them watching him. After that, uh, we also noticed that the hunters now they retreated a hundred yards or so from the same trail that where they had uh, found the jaguar. They were very much certain that the jaguar would return to the same trail and they concealed themselves or took cover under huge trees so that they won't be visible to the jaguar and they will not scare it away. So now in page 17 we see that the men they took refuge under huge cedar trees so that the presence uh, would not be exposed to the animal. So the natural partition of the trees were like compartments and then they were so large that it can accommodate around a dozen of men. So six men in total or more than that. So these natural partitions or compartments were also used by the Indians hunter sometimes as shelter. 
So furthermore, we also see that the author, he described um, hunting as a very boring activity as the hunters uh, needed to wait patiently for the prey and in this case, it was the jaguar. And then they had waited for almost about uh, four hours long for the animal to come. And during this time, several of the Indians who were part of the hunting group, they fell asleep. So however, the excitement returned when they saw the jaguar coming up the trail, the same trail which had waited. And they saw that the jaguar was studying the strange tracks and it was trying to make up its mind whether um, the creatures that had made uh, these trails they were worth pursuing or not. And it was then that Rod threw out his lasso, his lasso flew and it encircled uh, the neck and it got hold of the animal in the neck and then the jaguar was snug tightly uh, with the help of the rope and it was not able to move um, like to make any more movement okay so the other end of the rope um, that was used in capturing uh, the jaguar that was being tied securely to a tree and we see that uh, the author describes more about the, how the jaguar struggled and it also tried to make a huge lunge that is like move forward with force and try to attack the hunters. On seeing this, the, hun the hunters they shivered and then they were scared and the author compares the situation to snowflakes and how snowflakes are melted um, before a hot wind like how even how ice cream melts if it's uh, in the summer if it's too much heat if it's too hot how ice cream melts so the same thing also happened uh, they were shivering and then they were scared and so he compares uh, the situation to snowflakes then the author also knew that uh, the ropes they were very strong and sturdy and it was enough to hold the animal in its place but he was also unsure about whether the hunters they were able to resist or to stand or have the nerve to stand against the tearing roars of the jaguar. So after the jaguar was uh, captured, they sent an Indian uh, to the camp with orders to bring a boat and uh, a cage was also brought and the author told Roth that they will need strong persuasion, convincing power to make the jaguar enter the cage. To this, uh, Rod replied that he does not need any persuasion to make the animal enter the cage, but instead he will use um, his capabilities and skill to catch, uh, to make the animal enter the cage. So the jaguar uh, was constantly fighting for its freedom. It was lashing at the door of the cage it um, uh, trying to run away but finally somehow they managed to put the animal inside the cage and the door was slapped shut and it was locked. At this time uh, Rod came up with an experiment or a technique and this technique was uh, passed down to him from another hunter who told him that a male animal can be caught or captured by using a female to attract him and then uh, he was telling uh, the author that we'll see whether this will work or not. So a new cage was placed beside uh, the cage where the jaguar was kept and then the door was left open and an arrangement was made where uh, suppose the, the animal will enter the new cage then it will uh, open up the it would trigger on its own and then it will close the door behind and keeping both the animals in one cage. So um, the author and then the hunters, they now thought that maybe the presence was not needed and then they went back to camp and, and they could hear the roar that the cage jaguar was making through the woods. They climbed on the hammocks uh, that were strung between trees and then they tried to sleep 
but then uh, the roars and the grunts and the growls it was so loud that um, it was almost like the sound of thunder and they could not sleep so later uh, they also found that the roar subsided and in the morning when they went to check out uh, the cage they found that the female tiger was lying quietly uh, near her new uh, companion hunters were very happy and then they thought of transferring the cages on the deck of a batalo that is a boat and place them side by side but despite being with the female tiger inside the cage the male uh, was trying to fight its way out and was trying to break the slats by hitting on them so with nightfall uh, i mean nightfall the courtship became more uh, became more unyielding then uh, the hunters could hear a uh, roar uh, near the cages and then they also heard the creaking sound uh, of how the bees flung uh, over the cage and how it got away so there was also sounds of smashing and splintering meaning breaking of uh, the cage where the cage was crashed and then when they reached the batalo they saw that the two uh, animals they were not there in the cage anymore the cages were empty and then they uh, managed to escape so to this the author he uh, writes that they had not reckoned upon the string of love meaning that uh, together the animals they uh, got themselves free and he did not like not only he even the other hunters they did not believe that uh, the two animals that is the jaguar and the tiger they would be able to escape from the cage by leaving it broken and they disappeared from the hunter's sight. So the last part of page 18 we see that um, after a few days when the jaguar and the female tiger they had escaped the hunters they found another spore means another footprint and it was their second chance to redeem themselves to catch the animals so they were more careful this time and they also traced the pug marks or the footprints of the jaguar and what they noticed was that the pug marks or the footprint led to the caves and it disappeared within so they made uh, i mean like they had an assumption that probably the animal was inside the cave because there was no other footprints that left um uh, the cave and the footprints it ended inside and there was no footprints that came back outside so they had an assumption that the jaguar must have been in the cave and Roti did not make any attempts to go inside instead he decided to go back to camp and he will recruit some more of his men more of the equipments that they need and then they would return uh, to the cave and they would they would uh, you know like climb to the steep uh, mouth of the cave and uh, they would put a net a net in the sense that on the floor like you can see right you know right how the entrance is like so suppose even if it's like a door for example um they put a net outside so on the four edges of the cave they put uh, the net so that they thought that if the animal he would come outside for food then it would be caught inside the net like a bag okay like uh, this was the 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 um, idea that they came up with in order to catch the animal. So they, um, as I said, they uh, put the net on the four corners of uh, the cave, and only like you know, like the the opening was tackled a bit lightly, so that uh, when it comes out, it will be like I know the animal will not be stupid. It will just come and run in uh, the net but probably they had made an attempt in such a way that the animal also when it come outside 
like probably they thought that if uh, if suppose uh, like at night it would come out at night and you will not see the net and it will be caught inside the net okay so this was the second attempt so let's continue so the idea of placing uh, a net at the entrance of the cave uh, that when the animal will be caught inside, I mean like in the net, it will be uh, almost how it is caught inside a pouch, okay? So it will be left hanging or dangling and then the upper portion of the net will be closed so it will be difficult for the animal to come out of it. So as the hunters they were waiting for the jaguar to come out, they had an assumption that most likely the, the jaguar would come out in the evening or at sunset or at night to to come out for hunting for its food and here the uh, the hunters they waited and waited for a prolonged period of time and the author again uh, in page 19 he describes the beauty of uh, the amazon uh, he describes the different kinds of birds, trees, um, again monkeys. It was like a colorful kind of a sanctuary where these animals are kept. And it was also again like a new experience for uh, the author to see all these colorful uh, beauties of nature that he sees in the Amazon forest. So even after long um, waiting, like prolonged waiting for the animal, it did not come out. So what they decided was that they would leave four men on duty and then the rest of the hunters, they would go back to camp. So they all ate and then they crawled back into the hammocks and then they could not even sleep at night because uh, the forest was in full cry with the howling, grunting, growlings of the animals at night. It was very deafening but it was also one of the characteristics, uh, characteristics that describes the Brazilian forest. The author also uh, described that as long as the sounds of the animal continued, like the animals continued at night and that gave them the opportunity to sleep. And suppose if uh, the sounds would stop uh, suddenly and they would be awakened by um, the silence, then probably it must have uh, the jaguar that has come out of the cave for its hunt. But as they waited, the chorus of the crying animals continued without interruption. So at sunrise, that is the next morning, uh, they assumed that maybe the jaguar would again most likely come out for his quest for food and drink and everyone they went back near the cave so the morning was very cool and cool but uh, during uh, the afternoon time the heat became more intense so everything seemed to be a waste of time and they again they had another assumption that perhaps they might not be any animal inside the cave and the only thing or the only way to find out how this uh, about this is that that someone will go and investigate so what we also see here is that Rod who is the, the leader of the group he was not in the habit of giving such kind of a job such kind of a risky job to anyone else so he decided that he will go by himself and he cut the pole, tied his torch to the end of it and he was uh, saying like hoping that if he will go inside maybe he will uh, be able to make the animal come out or in the sense make him chase also, to, uh, chase him to come out. So he slipped uh, around the net and he walked back slowly into the cave and it seemed like a long time that he had been inside all the other hunters outside, they were waiting uh, their tents and they were also listening to growls or perhaps a shout for help from Rod and they they thought that maybe that the Rod will be able to bring the animal out uh, which will be captured into the net. So as time uh, passed by, 
all the hunters, um, you know, they were taken uh, aback by tension. They were very much tense as they were thinking why Rod did not come out as yet. He has been inside. He went inside for a very long time already. Not hear any sound of the animal, nor they could hear the the roar or the rush of a heavy body or they could not see the rush of a heavy body also being uh, caught into the net but then suddenly uh, they did see some something was rushing towards the net it was a person with a heavy body that was captured and it was uh, swinging left to right right to left into the net and uh, the occupant was not the jaguar but it was rot himself here we also see that rot again being a good leader he did not send anyone to take up the risky job that he went by himself to go and investigate and see whether uh, the jaguar was inside um, the cave or not and also we we, we see we find out that uh, despite his attempt to go and make uh, the jaguar come outside the cave it was not the jaguar that was caught inside the net but the occupant was rot himself Seeing the occupant of the net was a rod and not uh, the jaguar gave uh, the hunters a bit of relief as they now are, are, are assured that nothing had happened to rod. So the hunters also they saw uh, a flash of black and gold ring inside the cave and then they assumed that it was the jaguar only who had uh, made rod to rush outside the, the cave. So the view of Rod swinging mid-air created a very um, funny kind of a moment, humorous moment for the hunters because the view of Rod hanging in uh, an aerial, aerial means mid-air prison, was something very, very humorous uh, for, for, the, for, the, for the men. So the sight of Rod hanging mid-air was actually the reason that broke the tension of the hunters and seeing that they started laughing hysterically then we also see that rod is actually not a man who is uh like who lacks a sense of humor who does not understand jokes or things which are funny but then what we see his here is that he was so shaken uh from the moment that he was inside the cave that he could not join in the merriment so after that when he was disentangled and freed and brought down uh, from the net, he sat up on uh, a log and the author approached him to ask him the reason, I mean like what happened inside. So Rod said that when he went inside the cave, it was a very uh, huge uh, room and it was plenty of room for him to get passed through by the animal. But he just like waited and watched. So he went near through uh, the animal and then uh, he tried uh, poking him, making him like instigating him to come and follow him or to attack him. Okay, so uh, he poked him once, he did not move and he poked him twice. And it was on the second time uh, the jaguar stood up and he broke the pole that Rod had into bits, into pieces. And then with one swipe of his paw, he was able uh, to put out the light. And it was then that Rod realized that he needs to travel fast. He needs to run. And uh, he knew that in fear, like if he would run, he would need quite a force to run towards the entrance of the cave where he would be able to rip open uh, the net that was uh, hung on the side of the, I mean, on the entrance of the cave. And suppose if he, he failed to do so, if he failed 
uh, to rip the, the entrance or the, the net and the entrance of the cave, then he would bounce back and he would become uh, the jaguar's dinner. So that was what he did not want it. So he was very much scared. And he also realized that the second uh, time also would not be a, a good time for, I mean, not a, a successful one for them to catch the jaguar. So he decided that he would call in a council of meeting and he calls in his mates and most of the mates or most of the Indians, they only talk or they only spoke in Tupi. But it was only one uh, person among the others, that is Zingu. He was able to speak in Portuguese and English and that was because he walked he worked at the docks at Manosuke so he worked at the docks so he was able to speak uh, in English and Portuguese so some of the men gave him suggestion that they should dug a pit uh, near the river where the, the jaguar would eventually go uh, for a drink or hunt and some of them also gave a suggestion that uh, they should use uh, catching the animal by lassos again uh, when they will be in a boat and then the animal will be in water so that it will be helpless and will not be as strong as uh, the animal was on land. Okay, so these are some of the suggestions that they, the, the men gave in the meeting when the second attempt failed. page 21 we notice that Zingu who is uh, always busy who always managed to be busy even during serious discussion was mixing bird lime so bird lime is a very uh, adhesive like sticky substance that was made from a bread fruit and it has the, the quality or you can say uh, that it is stickier than fly paper so the Indians of the Amazon uh, also with the Polynesians of the South Sea, they use this particular substance to catch birds. So what they do is that they smear or they uh, cover part of the stuff on a, on a branch of a tree where the birds, when once they, they sit on these branches, they will not be able to escape and they are also not injured during the process. So uh, it is very valuable for hunters as they can use them uh, both for uh, taking birds alive where they can use as pets or they can also use for hunting birds where they can eat. So now when Zingu was mixing uh, the bird lime, he had a different purpose in his mind and that was actually to, to catch birds. Uh, to serve as dinner for certain animals that they will be hunting uh, in the forest. And suddenly Zingu he quit stirring and a brilliant idea struck him, took possession of him and he suggested the idea to Rod that is to use this bird line to catch the four uh, hundred pound jaguar. Rod was not, uh, was not willing to accept when uh, Zingu gave the suggestion and when Zingu insisted that they get many tigers this way and uh, he turned to the other Indians and even they they, uh, they agreed to Zingu's suggestion then Rod also thought that he would give it a try. At first Rod thought that maybe they are trying to make a fool of, out of him since he, he was caught into the net uh, in the first place in the second time when they tried to catch the jaguar but since uh, he, he got uh, assurance from the rest of the hunters then he decided that he would continue uh, with the suggestion that Zingu had given. The men they were very much excited uh, with the new purpose or the new proposal that was given, not purpose, but the new proposal that was given by Zingu and then they took uh, the net out of the cave, I mean not the cave, like the, the net where Rod was hung, they took the net and then they started to smear the net with the bird line and then they covered the top of the net with leaves so that it will not 
come into notice of the jaguar. They waited and then they, they thought that they would put uh, the net on the trail where the jaguar would pass through where they would go to the river and have its food. And they were very much certain that the animal would be compelled to come through the trail and it will be easy for them to catch him by then. We were waiting for the jaguar to come uh, through the trail. The same sounds and roars of the howler monkeys, then the croaking sound of the frogs and toads along the riverside, uh, I mean along the river bank, as well as the whining and squeaking sounds of the animals in the trees continued. So none of the hunters, they wanted to, to go back to the camp because they did not want to miss out uh, this great moment. They did miss uh, the warmth of the of the camp, but also suspense um, kept them alive. They waited, and then half hour, uh, an hour before dawn, then the sound of the night song, the night songs of uh, the forest subsided. And as it was almost dawn, they saw that something had been caught in the line. But it was not the jaguar, but instead it was a gotti, which was of the size of a rabbit. So Rod was very much disgusted and then he wanted to break loose uh, the net apart. But then Zingu advised him, like, you know, like to let it be, let the animal be there in the net so that it will, it will serve as bait uh, when the jaguar would come. They thought that they had waited in vain, but... Uh, Suddenly, they saw that this huge yellow and black uh, unexpected figure was coming uh, towards the trail and it was the jaguar. So the eyes of the jaguar, they were still uh, droopy as he was still sleepy and fortunately they were away from the trail so he, he could not smell them again. So he did not have any suspicion that he was being watched. So his movement, he was crawling slowly uh, towards um, the rodent and he feasted uh, on the small agoti which within a few crunches disappeared uh, inside the jaguar's mouth. So the moment has now come whether to see whether this uh, suggestion really uh, worked or not. And Rod and the third, they were still skeptical. That means they are, they are very much unsure of the fact that whether the bird lime was able to, to uh, keep the animal down. After he had had his breakfast, uh, he hunted on his prey. The jaguar stood up. He lifted one of his foot. He was able to come off easily. Uh, the bird lime was not so strong to keep the, the jaguar down. So they all assumed that whatever the Indians they had suggest, uh, suggested and whatever uh, proposals that was made by Zingu that was all wrong. So as any sensible person, uh, Rod, he thought of throwing again his lasso out um, at the jaguar encircling its neck. Zingu asked Rod to wait and will, they will see what will be the next step of the jaguar. So in the concluding bit of the chapter, we see that uh, the jaguar, as he lifted his uh, foot and he was able to come uh, loose without any difficulty uh, from the bird line, the hunters were, I mean Roth especially, he was very much disappointed with the fact that he could not keep the animal down. So later they observed that the jaguar had lifted his paw and he was trying to lick off the the six sticky substance that was stuck to it. So the result was not as they expected, but it was satisfactory. Uh, his mouth was also like plastered with lime and leaves. That was because of the bird lime. 
he was trying his best to get uh, all the leaves from uh, from his face he was trying to paw his face like you know removing the the stuff from his face so he paw more and more but instead of getting it off uh, it started to spread uh, into the ice into his eyes and then he sat down and he started using both of his feet that is his front feet he tried to clear it off he tried to bite it off uh, his hind quarters that is there is a body part situated behind the hind legs and he was caught more and more into it and he became more occupied and the lime and the leaves were plastered all over its body and it was all clear now and then uh, the author also he remembered one of an incident where he talked about his grandmother's uh, when incident that happened in his grandmother's house in Canada when she had a new cat uh, plastered the cat's paw with butter so the cat uh, you know cats are uh, animals uh, I mean especially cats they get very much excited with the new surrounding so this was the best way to keep them busy or engaged and by the time it was able to lick the butter off then it no longer had to to worry about anything else so this was an age old method and it was used to make cat to become used to a new uh, surrounding or a stranger home so and again we see that even the author he noticed that this also worked with the jaguar as he is also from uh, the family of the cat so he was a big cat and even the, the jaguar liked to keep itself clean. So Zingu took an opportunity uh, during this time and he uh, let uh, the far corners of the net, he drew the lines of the far corners of the net and then uh, the net slipped over the jaguar's body. So that is how the jaguar was caught. So now the jaguar realized that he was in danger. He was trying to trash and trying to cut through the meshes of the net but he had completely entangled himself and it was not possible for him to get out. The cable of the net ran in the door of the cage and it was then that, that how the men they were able to capture this jaguar. Still it did not give up, it, it tried uh, to fight back for its freedom. But they were all uh, stout bam or large thick bamboos uh, like four inches in diameter so that's why it was not possible for him to fight uh, his way out of it struggle for almost half an hour uh, to get him inside the cage and lock the door and finally they were able to catch him in a very untidy condition so uh, next after that they thought that uh, the bird line would keep him busy for another week as he will be busy licking it off his body and they thought that they will be able uh, to transfer the animal to whatever place that they had uh, thought of in the very beginning. So, but then uh, he, the author said finally that they had underestimated uh, the strength of the jaguar because three weeks later, that is at Manos, he was able to get out of the cage. He was supposed to go to New York only traces that were left in the cage was of the bird lime that had been part of him uh, when he got uh, caught in the net smeared uh, with bird lime by the hunters. So this is how uh, all the attempts to catch the animal fail. They tried three times, they attempted three times but all the three times failed. The first one did work but he managed to escape. The second time it did not work as Rod was caught in the net instead of the jaguar. And third time the bird lime did work but still the jaguar was uh, was able to, to come out of, uh, of it and he was able to set himself free. So now we have come to the end of the chapter. And this is an overall summarization of the text.